but I'm just say saying to you, that won't fool any council. They will see right through that, the fact that you've just split the titles in order to make it look as though they're four separate plots of land. Hi Duncan, welcome to Property Elevator. Hi, thank you. So firstly, where have you come from today? I've come from Sukup in Kent today. Great. And is that where the investment is as well that you've brought? Oh, no, no, no. It's in Lenham in Kent. Brilliant. OK. And so how much investment are you looking for in terms of uh, the deal with the Angels? Initially, 1.4 million. And so what would it mean then to you if you were to get this funding today? It would be a life changing event. So Duncan is coming in to see us. He's got a commercial to residential redevelopment project in Kent. He's looking for £1.4 million from us uh, and offering us a 60-40 split in our favour. Sounds interesting. Should we have him in? Yeah, let's see what he's got to offer. Um, I'm Duncan. I have 18 plus years of building refurbishment experience. Um, I'm also a project manager. Um, I have a HND in building and architecture. And um, I came out of the, the building game and unfortunately, due to personal circumstances, I um, was out of work. I won't go into that, but basically um, it came to the, I was 55 and I took out my pension money and started my own company. And I've always had a love for architecture, so I started a, a, a company finding investment properties for investors. Um, it's not been fantastic, but you know, it works. Um, this opportunity came along and I thought, right, I'll do one for myself now and come and see you guys. Um, the property itself is a old inn and hotel, and that's in Lenham in Kent. And I believe it would quite, I wouldn't say easily, but I think that you'd get the planning permission to convert the property into four residential properties and then you'd get the planning permission to actually build four more residential properties on the surrounding land. Basically, it's a hotel at the moment. It's an inn and a hotel. So the, 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 the front part of the property mm. is a part 17th century inn. And you're looking to convert the existing building into four, four dwellings? Yes. And build four separate detached dwellings in the grounds? Yes. Uh, which all appear to be beautiful woodlands. Um, have you obtained a planning feasibility report on this? Um, what there, there was a, a sort of a pre-app um, that was done in 2019. That was when the pub was still um, feasible as a business. And unfortunately, due to the lockdown, that the, the pub closed and it hasn't been open since about, I think it hasn't been open for 24 months now. In your pack, you've said that the four detached houses in the grounds, what you propose to do is to split off the titles. So you have four separate titles to put in four separate applications to build yes. four separate houses because you think that will be easier. Or, the the uh, reason for it was, what's, what's the rationale one there? of the things that the council brought up was because of the size of the plot, they would want 40% affordable housing on the plot. Okay, no, I, I understand that, but I'm just say, saying to you, that won't fool any council. They will see right through that, the fact that you've just split the titles in order to make it look as though they're four separate plots of land. Right. They will look at the history um, and they will look at who's behind those companies and it would be, um, it, it would just put their back, uh, uh, their nose out of joint quite considerably against your proposal because it would okay. be purely transparent what you're trying to do. Um, listen, I'm going to um, show my cards quite early here. This is not for me because I, you can't even consider these sort of applications without a proper planning feasibility no, document. No. Okay. So I'm, I, I'm basically not going to proceed with this. I'll leave it to the other angels to see what they want to do. Just a couple of questions on the numbers. Um, sure. So uh, you mentioned that you're looking for 1.4 million from us, uh, potentially uh, the total Costs are about three and a half or thereabouts. Uh, yes, right? yeah, right thereabouts. Where would the other, um, where would the other the balance come from? I think that would be, be decided on once the, the planning had gone through. So I didn't think. As, it, do you have funds to contribute? I or don't know. No, no, it would be sweat finance. equity from me. Okay. Are you struggling to find your next commercial to residential conversion project? 
Well, over the next two years, virtually every UK bank branch will close. Banks are fabulous buildings in prime locations and thanks to permitted development rights, they're really easy to convert to alternative uses under a light touch planning regime. My team have put together a list of over 500 UK bank branches which are poised for imminent closure. And for a limited period only, you can download this list absolutely free. Your next commercial property project is on this list. So download it now and enjoy the rest of the video. In the pack, um, if I'm honest, I'm disappointed, okay? In, in any walk of life, you have to remember the six Ps, which is prior preparation and planning prevents poor performance, yep. okay? In this pack, there is very limited data, limited reasons to go and um, why you'd want to build here, um, limited um, data as to the demand for the properties, um, your not contributing anything other than bringing the deal and the, the local sweat equity. Um, and I think that it's naive of you, if I'm honest, and therefore I'm going to be dead straight and say, this is Bit not one for me. And I wish you, <laughs> and I wish you um, all the very best for the future. As always, you know, the, the, the angels do miss many tricks. Oh. Um, on this occasion, <laughs> however, they haven't. That would be a first here, um, you know, in the angels uh, circle. Um, and, and I kind of echo Scott's, uh, you know, points there really on a more, um, you know, more friendly basis. Obviously, I'm not quite as mean as Scott. He's a, he's a banker. Um, he's got I'm a credit a team behind him. A financier. 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 You mispronounced, did you? Yeah, sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> really, all you needed to do today was come in with that feasibility yes. study on the planning. Yeah. More detail on the pre-app. I can ask you about that. I get a feeling you probably won't have as much detail as I'd like yep. um, about what that pre-app was. Um, there could be a scheme here if you kept the pub open, leased that out, maybe converted two of the rear houses. There's a reason why four. the pub was closed. There's, there's limited demand for people. Yeah, but if you can't get football. planning, you know, yeah, you either fight for the planning and, and or, actually, or you keep the pub open, right? And just the, develop the rest the, of the, the site. Planner, the planners are not going to uh, give you consent for residential residential use unless they know that the plan, the pub is not viable. So the pub it, has to not be yeah, viable yeah. in order to get the I agree. So is, there, is there any other pubs local to There's this There's 18. Uh, oh, wow, okay. Right. <laughs> it, it, there is a good yeah. argument, yeah. but they didn't like it at the time. There's they might not like it now. There. So what I'm saying is, even if they don't like it now, we want to pre-app for the four new houses. This could work with four new built houses, just leave the pub open or, or try and lease the pub and whatever, fight that. You know, but like you said, split the title, yeah. not in some sort of planning, um, you know, loophole, but fight for the four houses, get that. That would add a load of value. But you know, so I want to see, I want to see a pre-app for that. Um, and I want to see a vi viability study for that. Um, and then you might have something that's worth bringing. I know you can't do that in a, in a few days. No, so don't get no. me wrong, but you could have had a planning consultant look at this for a few hours and yes. you could have brought that. So it leaves us totally in the dark. I mean, I could have picked any land site in the whole of England and gone, there's a closed pub with a load of land <laughs> and I could probably find a thousand on one of the tech I think softwares Nicholas out is being there. a bit harsh. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, the, yeah, the friendly bit of advice is to do those little bits um, and come with something more tangible. I'd love to have made sure. you an offer. I'd love to have said, let's do it subject to planning. That but was I'd, a really long way of saying yeah. you're out, by the way. Yeah, well, uh, well, I'm not out, I'm just not in. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to be like a lot it. more concise than my friend Nicholas <laughs> and I agree with what the guys have said you know even just some comparables and some reasons as to why this makes sense in this location which you kind of had but you kind of didn't um, uh, the way it's been presented it's not really investable no you know, we, okay. we can't confidently say yes we'll give you 1.4 million quid and therefore it's not really doable okay yeah. I think you're a lovely guy. It's great that you've put the pack together. It, Thank you. It's lacking a hell of a lot of information for me. Sure. Um, it's a great idea, uh, but as Nicholas said, we could pick up many lots yeah, yeah, and, sure. and just say, well, that will make a great investment. Without the, the information to back it up, the feasibility report, it's really not worth no. anything at this moment okay. in time. Okay. So if you go away, look at that. Um, maybe come back on season seven with uh, something a little bit more meaty and something that we can actually invest in and have okay. good confidence in you and the deal. Sure. Yeah. All right. Sorry to say that you haven't had an offer here today. No, fair enough. Um, I think the main thing has been the, the to come in with um, some feasibility of how viable the proposal is. That's, sure. That's the main thing that was lacking here. Um, 
But thank you very much for coming in. Yep. So what? Thank you for uh, having me. Wish you pleasure. all the best in, in your property journey. So, Duncan, how are you feeling? How were you going into the room? I was nervous. Yeah. yeah. I was, I, I sort of, you know, I'm sort of quite uptight. <laughs> so. But did it go well? Did you feel like you got some constructive criticism and some advice to move forward? Yes. Yes, most definitely. Obviously, I didn't get the deal. Um, but now I know what I need to do and what I need to bring back. So I'll get those done and I'll be back. Excellent. Do you still think it's a potential deal that you could do? I do, yes. Good. Well, good luck. I hope it goes really well. And thank you for coming on Property oh, Elevator today. thank you for having today. me. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. It was just not there, was it? Not enough info to really make <laughs> I any I think if you of. want to put in a proposal with planning permission, you've got to come here with a feasibility 100%. Uh, report. Uh, and basically, all you need is that. If you had come in, I mean, he found the deal last Thursday. As you said, if you're taking three hours of a consultant's time and just given, come in with a two or three page uh, report from yeah. a planning consultant and talked through the deal with a picture, that would have been... Even, even well, comments. Also, the, the comparable, the, there was no comparable evidence. No. Uh, he didn't know who his target audience was. There was no I data really around the value of properties in the, in the area. There was yeah. a, a, no, no ideas of the size of the, the population, the, the transport no. links. It was just... Time to sell. Yeah. And nothing, yeah. nothing yeah. at all. I think yeah. that's a, a naive pitch. But you know, you know, we haven't seen something here. Uh, perhaps John would. I you wonder. Know, he has a way of I pulling wonder. things out of the fire. Let's see what he says. Duncan, why did you come in with that deal with no information on it, uh, no pre-app, no information? It's all been said. In fact, Hayley, I think, sums it up very well. Uh, you've got to give yourself a chance on these shows, you know, and you've got to come in with more information to give the angels something, just something to work with. You gave them nothing. And I think Hayley sums it up really well. Sorry, Duncan. The Baker Street Property Meet is the UK's largest and number one property investors networking event. The property market is going through monumental change right now and at Baker Street Property Meet we aim to keep you up to date with the latest tips and tricks and insider tactics to help you keep on top of your property investing game and succeed in these troubled economic times. The Baker Street Property Meet is fundamentally about networking because it's not what you know, it's who you know. And at Baker Street, we aim to connect you with the people to make your property journey a monumental success. There's no better place to be to further your property investment journey than the Baker Street Property Meet. So make sure you're here, you're connecting with myself and Andrew Roberts, our expert guest speakers and 300 passionate property people each and every month. See you at the next meet. Get your spot at bakerstreetpropertymeet.com.